Page 137. Chapter 9. The Call to Woman. Allusion has already been made to that instinct which has accompanied in the past the developments of masculine activity by which men seeking to influence their fellow creatures for good or for power have invariably provided against the encroachments of the feminine influence. The recognition of woman as co-partner with man in the important activities of life is confining among ancient records to the oldest and the merely traditional. For the most part, during all the period which has handed forward to us connected records of its doings, the period of so-called universal history, the period really of Earth's slow re-education into intelligence and morality, women as actor or even as prompter of important deeds has appeared as though by accident. The main drama of events has been set forth by man. When the more general rule of woman's incapacity for powerful work did not account for this, man's tendency to restrict her capabilities accounted for it fully, and man in those times past was wiser. His instinct of self-preservation was truer than he knew. After the severance of the inter-involved forms of the perfect human being had become affected, and after slow processes of change had led these halves in course of generations so far away from their true condition, that they had learnt to gather upon themselves during earth life separate systems of atomic coverings, like the animals who have sex, the difference between the new and the first state of things was more terrible for the feminine than for the masculine part of the human duality. Man, it is true, in his more superficial parts, suffered such alteration that there grew within him the void out of which the impulsive Sympneuma was withdrawn, and that there grew upon him the prison of his flesh. But women, in order to enter her flesh prison, had first to be torn out of the coverings of herself, out of the envelope of the Sympneuma's outer form, and to be exposed, in the helplessness of a hidden thing discovered, to the rough process of an unnatural recovering. The contact of man with the animal accretion was on his original surface. The contact with it, a woman, was upon quivering and abraded layers that had abnormally become her surface. The man, though sore and waste within, and with a load of lead now cast upon him, was yet himself, though so much less than his real self, and retained, though in infinitesimal degree, his original function of projecting, by will act, the currents of vitality out into the world with which he stood in immediate contact. Uncrowned and diminished man, he remained yet man, and despite his weakness, the only instrument of God's outworking, the sign and promise of the divine will upon earth. But the woman, outside of the man, apart from the man, deprived of her function of infilling him within life, banished, in issuing forth from him, out of the scene of her sacred activities, being without the transmitting medium for her potent radiations, was in no sense the real woman now. If, in a dream form, she now accompanied man's career through external life, it was that through functions appertaining to the semi-animal formations she had donned, she might receive that honor which is due to services performed for God, man, and the world. And that, all phantom woman as she was, she might discharge some pale reflection still of the love force that cannot be transmitted through other than feminine forms. But the woman in the woman pressed no longer forth. Its full quality withdrew to ever profounder depths, hiding farther and farther away from the consciousness of earthly life, leaving only within the range of that consciousness such impulsive qualities appropriately attenuated as might serve her in her capacity of a willing and tractable partner of man's external life. Now, however, the hour has struck when the graves give up their dead. Through the world each human power that slumbered awakes one by one to the note of this age's clarion, and the myriad forms that lay within the universal breast, enwrapped in senseless slumber, arise in the piercing daylight of the new mission to which the world is called, and the last are first, for the most hidden things step forth from the remotest burial places to lead the issues of the time. Farther and farther down, man, in this perplexing period of earnest growth, 
has plunged his hand into his own bosom to draw forth qualities of increasing power and excellence and his application of them to the science of human life with the resistance to them of his weakness and his stupidity forms the mixed history of many generations farther and farther down in the fearlessness of his desire for what is better he has probed like the alchemists of old to elicit a power concealed among the atoms of all nature and at last has touched upon the sparkling traces of the deep mines of femininity which lie at the centers of matter and of men if that thing within all forms the form kernel in the form was at the time of humanity's sharpest danger most profoundly and completely buried away if the indwelling woman wrenched perforce out of the protecting man left throughout his system the cold legacy of void and the spaces thus vacated in him by her relatively solid personality shrank and hardened to protect the tender cells of inmost life of which he now lost conscious possession and if the outstepping woman who then put on the harshness of abnormal surfaces folded away in deepest slumber the widowed life forms of her own true self if upon all of nature there fell a corresponding torpor in its central forms so that throughout it every atom suffered in the closing up of its feminine life receptivity if the whole record of human history as it stands gives revelation as of its one persistent import of the long slow interrupted and painful resuscitation of these inner capacities in man to hold the divine human forces if in this weary and unended reconstruction of him into his true states the ages have piled themselves upon the ages while man has learnt with struggle and with much ill-doing and with fitful gleams and periods of high efforts and perceptions of divine intent with partial acceptances of holy message and ever recurring retrogression from his teachings to deal nevertheless with the forces that are in him with a surely increasing knowledge of the divineness that moves upon the human thing if the last power of all in earthly nature to cast its wrappings and rise to the light of day is the power hidden in the deep centers of each man to quiver from the impulse of all that is feminine in earth and sky it is because it has required since the first degradation and pollution of the woman these untold cycles of living and of strife to dig down into the veritable heart of human existence it is because what lay there the fullness of feminine activities having retreated so far remained perforce the last thing to revive it is because till the time of full preparation this thing must be held at last which was destined to become again the first the pure womanly in nature man and woman is the last of the latent universal forces to revive it revives now at the last end of the male history of the planet to become once more the first means of transmission into external life of all the processes divine which open thus again their door of perfect ingress into the earth but the re-establishment of a normal relationship between the divine vitality and the earth humanity would forever remain impossible without the organic changes in man and in woman which are being described there is no manner of uniting the male and female forms of being externalized as halves after the fashion of the earth's inhabitants so as to produce a combination that will be by yun and that can absorb the biunity of full life currents the external contract of two mutilated images devoid of the faculty by which particles mutually inflow can neither produce nor reproduce the biune human form men with the conditions inherited by their surface bodies unchanged can neither feed themselves with the elements of pure life through the organism of earthly women nor absorb it from the seas that roll throughout the peopling of the higher universe women in these conditions are equally incapable of drawing in the fullness of life and of bestowing it upon men men despite the solid imitation of manhood that they make in their garb of flesh are empty throughout the fine spaces that pervade them women beneath their fanciful array of unlasting charms are nude of the enveloping strength that should complete them therefore if human life is to confine itself as heretofore to an unconscious birth among conditions enveloping the planet earth 
to an increasing and then decreasing consciousness of existence in which desires and faculties flutter within imprisonment of definite limits and to participation as the basis of this state of things in the sex nature of brutes, then there is no hope nor vestige of a ground of hope for a satisfying change of circumstances among the divine children here. If man has not ripened yet for mighty changes in himself of which he may have cognizance, we may have indeed no right to look for any terrestrial result of the world's whole effort or its sorrows. Then the old despairs of divine aid and purposes are verified, and an eternal slumbering of consciousness were the best thing to be desired, or then the cold contentment of blessedness postponed beyond the grave is all suffering still for human hearts, and then the hungry prayer of the whole being at this age for present knowledge and possession of high truth and high delight is destined still to hang mid-air unanswered. But human life is undergoing a vast and mighty change. Quietly it steals upon it while it sleeps unaware. Like all the great events o'er which the heavens preside, it takes place not the less as a defining mark of trenchant epoch, because it is both the culminating fruition of all bygone facts, and the gentle initiation into long courses of new futurity. It comes, the change from the slumbering in a closed form system throughout each man, to its awakening by the inflow of pure feminine vitalities, by the ascension to it of the Sympt Numata's personality, and through her of a myriad radiations from the fecund womanhood throughout the mighty universes. It comes, the change in every woman now, from the profound suppression of her active powers to their surprised awakening at the embrace that steals upon her sense, as her Sympnuma's form constructs itself around her and over her, presenting her at last in those organic realms of her subsurfaces where she reflected heretofore as on a vapory void the confused images of dreams and disfigured truths with a fixed organism constructed to take up at once the waves of her deep vibrations and through which her contact is reopened into the whole connected world of potent manhood. It comes, the change which brings to man sure power and outgrowing from pure and perfect sensational delight of sex, it comes to woman, the change of the rebirth of her actual self. That self which lay in the earth woman, buried since remote times, alike from personal consciousness and from outward recognition, that self which can only know itself as being, when it is open to absorb the full potencies of the divine by unity, and to pass them forth to men. Therefore, while the condition of the earth as a field for human activities is, at the present hour, one which affords no ground for a definite behef in its high density, while the enthusiasm of its moral apostles straggles in a soaring growth above the ordinary dead level by its own sheer impulse of aspiration, and waves about the atmosphere of thought, deprived of any solid prop of perfect reason, while at last not only those preponderating masses of the human family to whom the profound mercy permits a condition of half-sentient torpor, but even the large majority of fine minds, the bone and sinew of all progress in surface things, alike are victims of the opiate of acceptance of present resources as the final ones, while for the most part the sciences, the proud and pure, live but to demonstrate that they have reached their apex, and will construct no longer, because they have assimilated to their full capacity the whole reflection of nature, and while the mighty pyramid that they have gifted to the hearts of men professes thus to represent the sum and fullness of all that has been thought and felt and understood by manhood of the past, and also to be the sign of all that can be thought or felt or understood by manhood of the future, and while the spreading life of human beings extends itself as regards the many, for all this not the less in sorrow and filth and strife and dumb stupidity, which pure life rays from the few are impotent to dissipate, while, in a word, the world of human life feels itself coming to its end and feeds at last upon the vitals of its past experiences for want of fresher food, there steals into this older world 
in every unit of its fainting forms a new, a world of intenser experiences, of unsuspected faculties, of vivid sensations, of fresh physical insight amid the fine forms and spaces of all nature, of knowledge sure, because sensational experimental, of the action throughout this old decaying plant of the vast forces that play upon it from the mighty universe. But the consciousness of man that he enters these new conditions, the opening, in fact, of the dormant inner consciousnesses of man's atomic centers, is effected solely by virtue of his organic reception of the Sipnuma's organism within his own, and, more vital still, in the woman halves of man, by virtue of that resuscitation from paralysis of their inmost forms, which follows the pervasion of the more surface system by the male Sipnuma. For through these inmost forms alone in womankind can approach their biune fertilization of renewed humanity. Therefore, if the message that this brings is weighty for the man, it is more ardently pregnant for every woman who breathes. If it calls him to shake from off his feet the dust of the used past, and leave off searching in it for the warrant of all he does, if it affirms to man the duty and possibility of becoming sentient to a new order of potent experience, which he may wield for the destruction of all that is ill, because unhuman in his planet, it woos the woman with a word of meaning more intense. It bids her wake who slept. It bids her rise who lay in grave-like rapages. It bids her live who was not, but who appeared as unsubstantial imaging of lost womanhood. Now she must be, that man may drain from her the nectar for his substance, while he works redeeming. Therefore, O woman, in this age of sharp transition, there is a marvelous lesson for you to learn that has not yet been dreamt of. In this learning of yourself, in this finding of the place you occupy betwixt your God and man, revive, for the airs of heaven breathe on you now to that effect, in the folded petals of your deepest nature. Bring forth at last, bring forth the joy of nature's depths. Man makes a new demand on you, and asks not for himself, but for all people. He craves not now the commerce of the dissevered sexes, nor the production of fresh peopling in their forms, for he lives now in the expanding chambers of his own subsurfaces, where the Sipnuma's presence pervades and satisfies sensation, and bids the old activities of exterior forms to make long pause, awaiting high conditions.